Okay, so, uh, so the topics we have covered include the micro and macro structure of the polymers as well as the nomenclature of the polymers. Now we'll move on to uh, the other important aspect of polymer science, that is how to determine the molecular weight of the polymers. You know, molecular weight, not just polymers, for any compound is an important chemical and physical information of the compound. <clears throat> but now, uh, like in the small molecules, which are non-polymers, determination of molecular weight is more straightforward because every molecule in that compound will have the same weight, will have the same molecular weight. But uh, when it comes to polymers, the picture changes. Why? Because now you take a polymer sample, there will be millions of billions of polymer chains in it. And we know that each, every chain is not of equal length. And I'm talking about synthetic polymers, not the biological polymers where every chain is of equal length. For example, you take one gram of albumin protein, all chains of the albumin protein will have same number of amino acids. I'm not talking about biopolymers, rather um, the synthetic ones, basically. Now, um, the chain, uh, what we have been calling till now, they are also molecules, basically, is it not? So a polymer sample can also be visualized from the molecules perspective. Like a compound, non-polymer compound, polymer is also a collection of molecules, no doubt. But what's the main difference? In a non-polymer compound, every molecule is of same weight, but in polymer it is not. Why? Because the chains have differing monomer units, is it not? Therefore, a molecule of a polymer is not identical in molecular weight with the other molecules in the same polymer. Therefore, uh, we should um, approach this uh, with a bit different uh, way, determination of molecular weight. So we have to coin new terms even, like the average molecular weight of the polymers. <clears throat> so in today's class, we are going to discuss uh, ways in which the average molecular weight of polymers is theoretically the theoretical approaches for the average molecular weight of the polymers. The practical determination we'll discuss later. Theoretical approaches. <clears throat> Fine. Now, there are different ways of expressing the molecular weight of a polymer. Molecular weight is also molecular mass. That is called number average molecular mass, mass average molecular mass, viscosity average, and the Z average molecular mass. We're going to see each one individually now. But before that, we tell that average molecular weight of polymers whether it is number average or mass average mass average is also called sometimes weight average these molecular weights average i am calling but actually they are not the averages they are the weighted averages fine <clears throat> so in statistics weighted average um, values and the average values are quite different uh, like I told, statistics can be applied to any uh, case. It is now being applied to polymers in our case now. But weighted average is a very commonly used term when uh, the means and the averages of the data is calculated. What's the difference between just an average, general average, and a weighted average? Okay. The difference lies in giving preferences. Anyways. So let us take uh, an example, yeah? of course, not from polymers, but from the students' performances in an exam, example, or for example, students' overall performances in a semester. Now, for example, I am, um, I am um, grading you for the internals. How much marks I have to give to the internals? And I've been given with a, with a, with a formula that the students have to be assessed on these counts, test marks, project work, attendance, class behavior. And as you see here, every uh, metric like test mark, project, attendance, class behavior is not carrying equal weight. Why? Because test marks is carrying a weight of 0.8, whereas class behavior is only 0.2. Okay, maybe this is a class where every student is a very good student. So class behavior doesn't carry so much weight. Uh, maybe like your class, yeah? Every one of you is so good. 
Okay. Now, um, you see, okay, now, let me uh, assume that a student has scored 50% in all these metrics. So what is his actual score? Is it 50%? 50? Is it 50? Because he has scored 50% in every uh, metric. Is it 50? Out of 100? I mean, question, please answer. Shouldn't be that difficult to guess even, right? Why? Okay, now, yeah, someone is answering. What's no, your sir, answer? it's not 50%. It's not 50%, good, why? If there was no weight, like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, then in case he scores 50% in all four metrics, definitely his average would have been 50%. There is no doubt, but there is a weight factor. What is it telling? If he has scored 50%, then you have to multiply that 50% by 0.8. Do it like that for all uh, metrics. And then the final score after multiplication with the weight factors, take the average of that final score, is it not? So um, what happens uh, when a weighted average is calculated? When weighted average is calculated, usually the averages tend to be, the value of the average, tend to be closer to the metric or closer to the set of data which has higher weight. Is it not? For example, since in the test marks is carrying 0.8, if he has done terribly well in test, the student, and has not done has, has not been good in the class, still he gets good marks, right? Because class behavior has a weight of only 0.2, whereas test marks has 0.8, like this. So this is a weighted average. Usually weighted average is used everywhere. Uh, you know, uh, in our uh, the CBCS system of scoring, where you get CGPAs and SGPAs, the weighted averages are used. Uh, but you don't know the formula, basically, how your marks are translated into CGP and uh, SGPA. Anyways, don't worry. So even the assessment, whether for an internals, like in our previous example, or for a bigger thing, like giving you a job, um, you are not assessed for one aspect of your personality, right? You are assessed various aspects. Example, uh, job appointment would require what is the weight here? I've expressed in percentage. In our previous example, weight was expressed as a number. So basically weight factor, this is called weight factor, in any weighted averages is only a number. It can be either percentages, whole numbers, or decimals, fractions. Now, uh, look at this example. <clears throat> which which uh, uh, metric carries the highest weight? Look at the example and tell which matrix carries the highest weight. Qualification. Yes, good, yeah, qualification. Which metric carries the least according to their assessment? The teamwork skills, only 10%. Maybe they are looking for uh, employees who can work autonomously and independently, not in teams. Therefore, they have given less weight for the team working skills. So what happens? If a person comes with very good qualification, maybe his uh, percentage is 95% in his exams, but still not doing so well in teamwork, still he will get through. Why? Because the weight is 40% for the qualification. But um, if someone is very poor at his qualification and team working skill is good, but according to this calculations, he won't get through. Why? Because there is low, least uh, weight given to team working skills. So, I hope now you can we can make out the difference at least uh, prima facially. What is the difference between the average and weighted average? Fine. So, if you have to calculate a weighted average, how do you do this? What I've explained now, I'm just putting it in a mathematical form, statistics form, formula. You just have to take the sum of 
every metric into its weight factor divided by total weight. Usually total weight comes to 100% or 1 uh, most of the cases. Anyways, so now uh, what do we understand by weighted averages? That they are uh, much more better index than simple averages. Sometimes weighted averages are more accurate than simple averages. Fine. But what we have understood here in our general examples, the case can be extrapolated to our polymers even. So how is the molecular weight distribution in polymers? Is it even? No, because there are chains of different molecular weights. So now if you plot a graph of number of chains, and number of chains with some molecular weight and the molecular weight, you see that usually you get a graph like this. So what is the point here? How to understand int interpretation of this curve? You have less number of chains with low molecular weight. Maybe for example, a trimer, uh, a tetramer, they are lower in numbers in the whole sample, as well as less number of chains with very high molecular weight less number of chains or molecules now instead of chains i will use molecules term lesser number least maybe least number of molecules with high molecular weight maybe for example bearing some uh, some 10000 residues lower i mean those chains are also not uh, common Wo which chains are common usually the ones with an moderate average molecular weight right moderate uh, molecular weight. Those chains are higher in number. Okay. Now, if you take a weighted average, like if you take the weighted uh, number average molecular weight or weight average molecular weight and calculate, usually your uh, answer comes nearer to this uh, value, right? Nearer to this value. It doesn't come here, the answer, average values, nor here, somewhere here in this region. Okay, so um, why is this happening? Because your weighted averages are usually closer to the metric which is having more weight. Anyways, but um, yes, that is the ideal curve. Actually, our curve looks like this, basically. It will not be even like this. Rather, a bit wavy. Uh, that happens. Okay, anyways. This is only a theoretical distribution, whereas this is more practical distribution. Whatever the case, <clears throat> You look at this. Um, what should be your uh, uh, what should be your ideal polymer here? In case you have prepared excellent sample of polymer, what would be your criteria? You have different molecules with different molecular weight or molecules with same molecular weight, which is a better sample according to you like proteins example all molecules have same molecular weight yes tell me which one is your ideal excellent polymer sample which has a distribution of molecular weight like this or which doesn't have a distribution rather gives a single peak yes which one do you think is a very good sample question your uh, answers i'm expecting yeah which one do you think oh my god should i call out the names and ask hmm? oh okay rashmi Rashmi, you are present or am I audible or not? Okay. The ideal polymer will be one which doesn't have a distribution. All chains are of equal length. That's your ideal polymer. So when all chains are of equal length, 
you don't get a distribution curve like this at all. Rather, it's simply you get a single line. You see, all molecules. There is no requirement of a y-axis even because this is a single molecular weight. It doesn't happen usually in the polymers. Why? Because the real polymers have a distribution. Even in the real polymers, there can be a narrow molecular weight distribution or a broad molecular weight distribution. So now, of course, we can't reach the reach the ideal point, but at least amongst real samples, we can classify them. A uh, one with narrow molecular weight distribution is a good sample of polymer, practically, than a molecular broad molecular weight distribution. Now, uh, okay, fine. So. Um, Fine. Before we go to the number average molecular weights uh, derivation, uh, you know, why are we uh, so much um, giving emphasis on this molecular weight of polymers? Because the properties of the polymers, like the mechanical strength of the polymers, or the melting points, which is called glass transition temperatures, TGs, these are all the properties which are functions of molecular weights. Usually it is seen that if you increase the molecular weight, the mechanical properties increase. Now you have prepared a polymer sample, which has a very broad distribution of uh, molecular weight. Then its properties are not very predictable because the molecular weight is very uneven. Uh, there is a big broad distribution of molecular weight. It now bears a direct consequence on its mechanical properties. It brings down the quality of the material. If the uh, property, uh, the molecular weight distribution is too much, it brings down the properties, uh, quality of the material. Similarly, if you are recording, uh, recording the melting point of the polymer, then it melts at a very broad range of temperature. On the other hand, if the molecular weight distribution is narrow, then it's a good quality polymer because the properties are very much predictable, very much under control, as well as its glass transition temperature is very sharp, not very, maybe sharp, relatively sharp, comparatively sharp. So therefore, um, the techniques of polymerization and the synthetic uh, aspects of polymers should always aim to Prepare polymer samples with very narrow distribution of molecular weights. Fine. <clears throat> okay. Now we'll go into the actuals. What is the formula to calculate the number average molecular weight? Fine. So what is the weight factor in the uh, number average molecular weight? It's the number of chains having a specific uh, value of molecular weight. That is the weight factor. <clears throat> so you can consider a polymer sample, which has now, let us take example, N1 number of monomers having the molecular mass M1. N1 number of monomers, not, not N1 number of chains of monomers. Of monomers is of course, uh, it need not be spelled even. Chains means it is having monomers. So N1 number of chains having molecular meat M1. And N2 number of chains, having molecular mass M2. Similarly, there are a number of chains and N1, N2, you can go on extrapolating to Ni. So Ni number of chains, which are having molecular mass Mi. How to find out the, find out the weighted averages? You have to take the weight factor and multiply by the quantity and then take an average. So what is the number average molecular weight given by? It is given by sigma Fi Mi. What is this Fi? It's the weight factor. And what is the weight factor here? Total number of chains in the denominator. It's a fraction. Weight factor is always a fraction. And number of chains with a molecular weight Example, if this number of chains is uh, 5 with a molecular weight 10,000, so then you have to take this as 5 out of some out of some 75 total chains, example. So your Fi becomes 5 by 75. So that's what. And then 
you have to take the average. <clears throat> so what are the uh, terms? Ni is the number of molecules. Now, chains have been represented as molecules. There is no harm in this. There's no problem because chain is also a molecule. Chain is only a very um, common word we are using. Strictly speaking, in chemistry, we should use them as molecules. So number of molecules having molecular mass, Mi. What is the N total? Total number of chains present in the polymers. Nothing but total number of molecules present in the polymer sample. And um, what is sigma uh, in I is nothing but the sum of all the chains, which will give you the total number of chains. So what I'm doing here, how to calculate this n total, that is what I'm doing. It is simply calculated by sigma n i. Fine. Now expand the formula for number average molecular weight. It will be simply summation of the weight factor into m i. So what is the weight factor? Fraction of chains with a molecular weight m i. So sigma n i into m i divided by n total. Fine. Now, what is n total? Sigma of all the number of chains. Uh, it's a simple formula even. This is the formula to calculate the number average molecular weight. But there's a problem with this formula, the equation part. What is that? In chemistry, particularly the stoch stoichiometry chemistry, we usually don't deal with number of molecules, right? Rather, the number of molecules is expressed in number of moles. Is it not? So what is the conversion formula? Moles is equal to number of molecules divided by Avogadro number or simply you can interconvert this formula in any ways you want so instead of taking the number of chains there is no problem with this if you know the number of chains you can use this but usually we work with moles right so you can divide this number of chains by the avogadro number so you do that what do you get you get number of moles so we have equation 9 which is now representing the same equation 5 in the other form in the mole form so divide Ni by Na, again Ni by Na. So instead of number of molecules, you get number of moles of molecules. So sigma Ni, Mi divided by sigma Ni. So this is what the working formula, where N is the number of moles. You can get, um, anyways, we will solve one problem. We will understand better. We will solve a numerical. Now, understand this problem first here. Yeah? Uh, I know you can use the ready-made formula in the previous slide, directly take it, do the substitution. That's fine. But please understand the question and the physical significance of this question. A polymer sample comprises of five moles of polymer molecules. Five moles. So the, 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 the question doesn't provide you the number of molecules of the polymers with the molecular weight 40,000 moles. But moles and number of molecules are always interconvertible. We know that. So there are five moles of polymers molecules which have the molecular weight of 40,000. And there are 15 moles of polymer molecules having the molecular weight of 30,000. And you are asked to calculate the number average molecular weight. So since the formula is given in the moles term, use the formula. Sigma Ni Mi divided by Ni. <clears throat> and how many uh, scores are given here? Only two. Is it not? 40,000 is one value of molecular weight. 30,000 is the other value. Only two. But in real samples, you won't get only two. You will get almost an endless list of uh, molecular weights. But in simple problems like this, there are two scores, 40,000 and 30,000. So what is your MI? 
40,000. If you put MI 40,000, you have to multiply this by 5 plus. Because why plus? Because sigma means go on adding till the last score. So what is the second score? 30,000 is the molecular weight. And what is the number of moles? 15. So, and divided by total number of moles. 5 plus 15, 20. So do this systematically. You calculate the total weight, 5 into 40,000 plus 15 into 30,000. So that will give you 650,000 grams. That's the numerator part. What is the denominator? Total number of moles. 5 plus 15, so 20 moles. Divide them, you get 3,25,000 as your average molecular weight. Okay, so you please um, uh, make the note of, please uh, uh, focus on the difference here. So our average molecular weight is 3,25,000. If you had taken the direct averages of these two, inaccurate right therefore we have multiplied with the weight factor and then taken the average that is why we are getting 3,25,000 grams per mole. so this is the average molecular weight of the polymer of course averages are the one we can only tell because the molecules are not identical fine so this is how uh, polymer molecules average molecular weight is calculated anyways i'm just running out of time you please send your uh, chat names in the chats so that I can uh, take that and I'll continue the class. Anyways. But as I told you, the 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 what uh, uh, calculation is not as easy as in the previous question. You will get a lot of entries, a number of scores like this, you see, and this set, this table gives you in, in terms of numbers, not in terms of mole. So there is only one chain, only one molecule with 8 lakh molecular weight. And uh, again, there is only one molecule with only 2 lakh molecular weight. This is the score. If you convert this into graph, this will be a typical Gaussian distribution, right? With slope up and peak and then slope down. But as you see here, usually 20 chains, maximum number of chains, have a molecular weight of about 5 lakhs, of, of 5 lakhs. So it's somewhere in between 8 lakh and 2 lakhs. So you can also calculate the number of the number average molecular weight for this. And then your formula remains same, except you have to write too many scores in that, add them, and then divide by total number of molecules. So how do you calculate total number of molecules? You add up all these molecules. How many molecules are there in the sample? You just add up all these molecules. That will be the total number of molecules. And then do the division. You will get the answer. Number mole average molecular weight. <clears throat> so you either you can use the number of moles or the uh, number of molecules themselves directly and calculate the number average molecular weight. So that's fine. In exams, usually you get, uh, usually you get a problem on calculating number average and weight average molecular weights. But um, there is something more about this uh, number average molecular weight. It is independent of the molecular size. This is important. Uh, why? Because uh, there are uh, different properties of polymers which are dependent on different uh, parameters of the polymer structure. The property like, for example, uh, what, which properties are dependent on the number of molecules rather than the uh, rather than the type of molecules and the molecular size of molecules? Which pro, which is that property, which is dependent on number of molecules, not on the size and nature of the molecules? Which property is that? Colligative properties. So if you are looking into the colligative properties of polymer solutions, then definitely number average molecular weight uh, should be considered. Therefore, usually the colligative properties are like this. And you know, all these colligative properties can be used even to know the number average molecular weight experimentally, to determine the number average molecular weight experimentally. So viscometry, gel permeation, chromatography, and group determination or proton number, these are all the techniques used to know the number average molecular weight experimentally. 
Now, in your syllabus, you are going to study osmometry in detail, how experimentally this is done. So we'll visit this again later. So I'll just stop here. So I hope um, I have uh, uh, conveyed you uh, the fundamentals of the average molecular weights. Fine. Okay.